Uh, just a little display on the uh, left is some of our uh, UPS product on the wall and some of our printed circuit boards, touch screen displays, and a few IGBTs in there that are utilized in the units. We have driver boards, control boards, and a lot of those we've localized here at this facility. What is the rate of this UPS? That one right there, that one goes up to 22 kVA. But our largest UPS goes up to 750, uh, 480 volt. So it'll be about 900 amps of uh, rated continuous power. And on this side over here, some of the drive controls, driver boards. Also for ASD, we have a uh, touch screen. Driver boards and a wireless communication card uh, for the drive communications for upgrades. Which one is wireless communication? Right there, one with the antenna. Oh, this one? Mm -hmm. And they have a little flash drive there for upgrades. Oh, okay, I see. And then two of the applications there, the G9s and FS1s that they build in this facility. And for the motor controls, just a little mock-up. Okay. Here we got some of our assembly areas. Heat sink, of course, for IGBT attachment. Holy crap. That's huge. Nice. That's <laughs> so you got to see your IGBTs mm -hmm. mounted to a aluminum heat sink. This is some like a topology we're showing. Here's your rectified front end. And all these are you got driver boards and snubber boards. Snubber boards are there for when during your turn on and turn off of IGBTs, you have a, a surge, recovery surge. And the snubber boards are there to flat top it or limit the amount of surge that the IGBT will see, because your biggest killer of IGBTs is heat surges. So you want to keep the surge under the rating of the device. So if it's a 600 volt device, you want to stay under 500 volt surge for the turn on and turn off to help protect the device. And then of course heat, most of the time you have a thermal junction temperature of no more than 125 C. So of course on most of our stuff, we have thermal cutoffs which don't go any higher than 90 degrees C, just to help with the tolerance of the device. And then we've got, uh, usually these are RC assemblies, so here's your R's, there's your C. And then of course, laminated bus bar and tin bus bar. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, all these are up here. They're all filled with capacitors. Well, they're all DC, well, they're all DC regular oh. capacitors, yeah. And then just, just, no, those aren't electrolytic, no. No, no. Those are all film caps. Thousand volt or two thousand volt rating. And then just some of the components sitting on the shelves, electrolytic caps, IGBTs in the raw, bus bars, like they just a full assembly. Uh, they get wire kits, ready all pre-made, save time. And then they attach, of course, in sub assemblies, uh, control boards, uh, laminated bus bar, heat shrunk bus bar for close tolerances. If the tolerance is less than half an inch, they either coat them or insulate the bus bars if they're less than half an inch. But normally the two pair bolt voltage is two square and then some of the uh, here's some of the assemblies that we talked about that go to the control plant. You got top hat uh, ventilation systems, which is no more than a big impeller fan inside. And then the power modules that get snapped in in parallel to create a larger and larger drive. You got large capacitors in the bottom, IGB key stacks, and these are much more than large heat sinks inside. We'll see the, we'll see the raw ones over here. This is drive. But these are just modules to help you parallel to get a larger size. So just one small size can be a 200. If you want a 600, you can three of them. All of it, you just parallel them. Our actual parallel modules. Yeah. Yeah, the voltage will still be 690 in this case. But uh, for the larger modules, you just parallel them up for, you know, one per phase, two per phase, or whatever. Uh, 690? Yeah, 690 is the voltage. That's for medium voltage. Low voltage will be 230 to 480. Uh, medium voltage starts at 690. And then larger ones will go up to 1600 or more. Okay? 
we move down here, we'll see some of the raw components for the modules. or more watts because the elements, contactors for open and closing, uh, large pressure power panels over here which will be your input, input for all drive. You have that input rectification, AC to DC conversion. Converted? No, it's just rectifiers. Uh, yeah. I mean, rectifiers, yes. Yeah. Just diode rectifiers. And they put a bunch of them in parallel for current carrying capacity. So you'll have A phase, B phase, C phase. So it has uh, L6 that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's only there's only two in there. That's a two package. So it's a Chinese twelve point. Yeah. Two four six. Yeah. What happens? Just this one has two. So yeah, it's not. This is one six something. Oh. Yeah. Okay. They just parallel them for current. They just parallel them for current. Why they are annoying? Or are they vertical? Well, they will. This will go up and be held up. The air will be sucked through it as, of course, heat rises. It will help wick the heat out of the unit. Right now, it's just they're laying down for assembly purposes, just so the guys can actually reach them. And but no, there'll be actually be a lot of them being put stood up in the unit, just for pedal, better ventilation. That's what these little shrouds are here. There will be another sheet metal piece that comes in, and that will be the directional heat to be sucked through the heat sink. Because underneath here, there's a heat sink inside. Oh, yeah. In the honeycomb heat sink, it'll suck the heat right through. The IGBT is, of course, will wick to the edges. And then, of course, the air being propelled through the unit will then wick it out the top. And most of the tops are top ventilation. So cold air in, cold air always sinks, heat always rises. So why not keep the topology and try to get rid of the top? Well, they're all engineers uh, dedicated to design that heat sink. Yeah, mechanical, usually. Yeah, mechanical. They'll run thermal analysis against the watt loss calculations uh, from the load and the engineers from the AC side. And they'll plug that into their thermal calculation and mass airflow sensors, and they'll actually do a thermal analysis on it. Yeah? And uh, so it will be critical with the kind of directly power by the Sometimes, yeah. There's some customer options that can be put under, yes. And then you have some of the, uh, we can go be walking there a little bit. This will be some of the uh, heat sinks in the raw. And these are those large caps that we just saw inside the uh, units. And there's the heat sinks that were disguised inside of the uh, module. See the large heat sink in the center, very thick. There's actually heat pipes inside that help wick the heat to the bottom base, which then where the air flows through it. There's actually large copper tubes inside there. Copper is a good conductor of heat. There's an, actually a light oil fill in there. It helps oh. wick it to the copper, and the copper transitions it to the heat sink, which then air flows and gets rid of the heat from it. We got, we got, you can actually see the copper rods over here. In the What's the light for? Pardon? That's light. Oh, that's, that's to tell the tester and everybody around that it's a live area. And once inside his area, he's got Here's a little uh, heat sink. You can see the copper rods in. These are some of the uh, heat sinks that are used actually for subway cars. These are for our transportation drives. They actually mount in large assemblies. And these large assemblies clip into the bottom of New York City Transit Authority's uh, railway systems. And here's those heat pipes we talked about right here. See the copper rods, mm -hmm. all filled. This is where the IGBTs are mounted. Oh. So the heat dissipates through the aluminum block into the copper oil filled rods, and through the heat sink, and these are mounted closer to the outsides of the rail car. Oh. Natural convection. Air blows right through them. So there's no fan, right? Nope. Natural convection. Oh. And of course, that's the speed of the train. And of course, when they're in the station, all the components are in an idle mode, low current. Of course, when they increase the load, they change the frequency, the PWM changes, the inverters produce more load, more heat, more watt loss. Watt loss is transferred through here, into the heat sink, into the fins, and naturally convected through the movement of the train. And you can see, we'll look at some more of the modules on the other side there, where it clips into the uh, bottom of the train. assemblies right there. It's getting ready to go into test and that'll be one of the modules that will clamp to the bottom of the train. 
the, the you probably saw when you've been a control plant. Some of the large, uh, they had them on big yellow uh, lifts. Okay. That's where the, that was the bottom uh, drive section. We have some of our starting production. Uh, 4200. Uh, 50 kVA in this case. Uh, 208, 480 in. Multiple modules. Control, transformers. Reactors, heat sink, DC bus, and all the control boards. A little older module, so everything's accessible from the top or the front of the unit. Main input, wires here. See this one has a maintenance bypass switch on it. So is this quick. back to back? Oh, just uh, you want to. This is just, no, no. This is double conversion. This is a uh, input. Nominal is two weight. It has a large input one. In this case, plus ten, minus thirty rated input. Uh, voltage. It's a 208 plus 10 to minus 30 that rate of voltage. And if it gets outside, of course, outside of that tolerance, then you'll go into battery backup. Okay. That's when the batteries then will phase in through a DC chopper circuit that's on the side here, IGBTs, and you'll actually drop the input if you get outside that input plus 10, negative 30% window. And it'll drop in, do a DC conversion. Uh, DC bus is actually 400 volts. The batteries will be, uh, you know, nominal. 270 down to a 230 or 200 volt cutoff and actually as a battery chopper that'll take that low battery voltage of course as you decrease the battery voltage the current increases increasing KWB but in this case that chopper keeps that 400 volt regulated so it'll take whatever low voltage you have boost it chop it up to the 400 volt bus rating and keep that inverter running it'll never know that anything happened and still produce in this case 150 kVA uh, running full load and that'll be proportional to how long your battery cabinet is. Yeah. Could be five minutes, eight minutes, ten minutes, could be thirty minutes. Customers put many of them in parallel, could be an hour. It's all up to the customer. How long they want to keep their load up. So this stuff will include the BMS, right? The, the battery cabinet? Yeah. No. No. In this case, this is one of the it's a little shorter version, but there'll be another battery cabinet on here. And that'll be something when the customer buys the unit, we'll spec in according oh. to their runtime that they need. Or a flywheel. Okay. We do sell, uh, they sell flywheels also. And like I said, a flywheel is no different than a, it's a large rotating mass, yes. big old flywheel, kind of like a motor, inside of a vacuum chamber. Uh, and it's spinning inertia, then gets turned to electricity with a, kind of like a motor in an armature kind of thing. As the motor spins, it creates voltage, that voltage is captured, and then utilizes as a DC source for the UPS. Okay. So it's only the, the parallel. You guys just know what the other thing is. Oh, you can use them all. Yeah, it's still different than a battery cabinet. And that's one of the other heat sink modules, the larger one. And then, um, all right, we moved them out. We had some other units here. But, and then here's some of the batteries, lead acid batteries, that all of our UPSs use. They do, they do bring here in the state, most, most batteries are made in the United States. Ready? Yeah. What's the milliamp hour on these? That one's a 45, 45 amp hour. Ah, okay. 12 volt, say 45 watts per cell for 10 minutes. Okay. And some of our transformers that we got to put in. And let's do one of our large testers here. We've got testing of the drives. They do full road to current, the motors are out, actually outside, and then they have a little flex sand cover that gets covered up the first time you put power on it. Uh, I think this one's actually medium voltage rate 690. Let me see here. Yeah, 690. It's got 672 right now. drives. These are the control panels for it. Several sections of assembly. And we'll go around and we'll look at some more UPSs here. Those 
actually some of the control modules that are good for the new series of uh, transportation. Okay, let's go look at the bigger UPS right here.